We'll join a group that's planning to restore fish and wildlife habitat on Rush Lake in Winnebago County. I'm Dan Small, and it's time once again for Outdoor Wisconsin. Summer to fall, winter to spring From Green Bay to where the St. Croix sings From Cattle Moraine to Superior Shore Outdoor Wisconsin Outdoor Wisconsin Restoring water quality and wildlife habitat in a 3,000 acre lake is a major undertaking but that's what a citizens group in Winnebago County wants to do for Rush Lake where over a century and a half of use and abuse have taken their toll. Last fall, we visited Rush Lake for a close look at the project. Rush Lake has undergone many changes over the past two centuries, and the lake no longer supports the diversity of plants, fish, and wildlife it once did. A steering committee with representatives from town and county government and regional, state, and federal agencies is working on a plan to restore and manage the lake. Winnebago County Supervisor Bernie Egan co-chairs the committee. The local community knew that there had to be a lot of things done with this lake. Uh, looking at the history books, it's been argued since the 1840s on how the water level should be on this lake. At uh, one time, this, there was big dams here, probably held back four or five feet of water. And later on, uh, farmers complained they wanted the water lower. Uh, we had a lot of trappers here. They wanted a different water level had some fishermen, they wanted it different, so it, it's been back and forth. Uh, this was a prairie pothole lake, and as a prairie pothole lake, um, they generally go from periods of drought to periods of flooding, and there's been a dam on this lake for, uh, the first dam was 1847, and there's been intermittent dams since then, and of course the dam's purpose is to keep a, a lake at one level, and that's not an ideal situation for a prairie pothole lake. Well, it is a prairie pothole. It's the biggest one east of the Mississippi, and um, Wisconsin's lucky to have it. We're looking at a bunch of cattail right here and some um, cane grass out beyond that. Um, it, th if we had been here 100 years ago, that would have been all bulrush that we were looking at, hard stem bulrush. This is a very large prairie pothole. It's about a foot and a half deep on average. Um, all the way across, and it's five miles long and two miles wide, so we're not talking a typical lake here at all. But it's, it's supposed to be a marsh, more or less. Located in southwestern Winnebago County, Rush Lake is drained by Wacaw Creek. The project encompasses the entire watershed, which includes the lake, the creek, and surrounding wetlands and uplands, as Bernie Egan explains. The total project's about 39,000 acres. The lake itself is about 3,000 acres. Why is the project broader than just the lake? Well, it, it's all of the watershed itself. We've got aerial photos that can show all of our different elevations uh, throughout the lake, the water depths. Uh, we start right down here at the dam, and as we work out, we have probably three feet of water. When we get further out, we've got a sandbar or a sediment bar, where there's maybe only six inches of water. Uh, the other maps would show if we drop the water two feet, uh, and we may do this to get some of the bulrushes restarted again, how much area would be exposed. Another one is if we actually got rid of the sandbar and dropped it down to the sill on the dam, how much area would be exposed. You mentioned some goals that your committee has developed. What are they? I think the biggest goal, to wrap it up real easy, would be to return it back to the way it was in the 30s and 40s and we had all the ducks and, and uh, some fisheries back the way it was. Uh, to get the bulrushes back and uh, open the channels. And the other big thing that happens here is we've got about 300 ton of lead in the bottom of this lake. That's our biggest challenge. The use of lead shot for waterfowl hunting was banned in Wisconsin in 1982, but for 140 years, shotgun pellets fell into the lake. Those pellets are still in the bottom sediment where they pose a serious threat to waterfowl. Years ago, uh, we had cottages, or shacks, we could almost call them, all the way around the lake. People would bring the train up from Chicago, Milwaukee. Uh, they tell me even one of the presidents were here hunting ducks. They'd uh, get off at Rush Lake, and they'd hunt ducks, fill barrels, wooden barrels with ducks, ice them down, and go back to Chicago again. And they're not here anymore? They're not here anymore. Very few of the cottages or shacks are left. We just don't have the ducks. Uh, the studies we did show that there are about 300 tons of lead in the wetland. 
uh, in the top meter. And about two thirds of that is in the top uh, one third meter or one foot. And so it's all pretty available to, to things around. And what's the problem with that much lead? Well, waterfowl um, come in and they, they'll pick that up as either food or grit, um, grind it up in the gizzards, and um, then it gets back into the lake when they die or when they defecate or things like that. And then other things start to, to pick it up. University of Wisconsin Oshkosh professor William Modi heads up the technical study group that is conducting a battery of tests which include daily monitoring of water quality. University of Wisconsin Oshkosh students like Pete Bonk collect water and sediment samples and work with geology professor Eric Hyatt who's concerned with the effects of lead on species that use the lake. We, we know there's lead is a problem and there's a lot of lead here in the environment. Uh, in the lake sediments from uh, lead shot. Uh, but my role is to look at the speciation of lead, how available it is to the organisms and how, distribute, how it's distributed in the environment. And it's taken into an organism, like, like into our body or the body of, uh, of a waterfowl, like a duck, and go into their, their uh, bloodstream in their body. Lead is a, is a contaminant and it, it does things like retards um, uh, brain function, and it's it's a it's a toxin for blood cell production. So it cuts down blood cell production in mammals. What'll it take to get the lead out? To get the lead out, <laughs> uh, one thing we could do is to cover them with bulrush mats. All those pellets. Um, it forms a pretty dense mat, a pretty thick mat. And if you could get a lot of bulrush back, you would cover a lot of that lead. Um, other things you could do would be to make the lead go down deeper in the sediment so that nobody could reach it. The problem with that would be if trumpeter swans come back in the, uh, in the program they have now. And I've chased two trumpeters off of this, this wetland just because they get down about a meter and they could easily pick up too much lead and then just die out. So we thought. It would be nice to get it below a meter, and then nobody could get it. And Research teams have also taken sediment core samples by boring into the lake bottom. Professor William Modi says analysis of these sediment cores tells an interesting story about the lake's history. We, um, we started out here in 1992 collecting sediment cores and did some analysis of those and indicated there might be an interesting record of the sediment that might tell us how often this area has actually been a lake and how often not and been more of a marsh or maybe even dry ground. We've learned some things that have probably have been known, but from our standpoint, we have some new data on them. Uh, one is that um, at least for the last couple hundred years, it's probably been mostly standing water out here. There's a lot of uh, carbonate in there, which reflects standing water conditions. So that's more water than we thought. We thought we'd see more evidence of marsh. So that's been a bit of a discovery. The other thing that comes out of the pollen record that we don't fully understand is that um, about uh, three feet down, there's a, a marked change um, from a time prior or deeper than three feet when there was mostly uh, oak pollen coming in to a time when uh, we have mostly grass pollen coming in. It may simply be the removal of the forest by the first settlers and then the grass coming in almost as sort of weedy grass. We wonder though if it might be wild rice or some other possibilities. So those are questions we're still addressing. Have you got hope for this lake? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think there, there's some things that can be done. Um, I think the hardest part will be making the decisions. Different people have different interests. And I think the big one is, has to do with lake level and whether the water level is going to be regulated or allowed to go back to a natural level. Um, that'll be a tough one. Well, at one time, this was uh, one of the premier waterfall lakes in the nation. It would ideally it'd be nice to be that again. I can remember as a kid down on the farm about five miles north of here, opening day of duck hunting, it sounded like thunder. We had that many ducks here. We had people from Milwaukee, Chicago, all over to hunt. I'd love to see these animals, or these, well, the animals and the birds back. <laughs>